Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my How to Make Video Games tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to continue making Tetris. In the next video, I'm almost guaranteeing I'm going to finish Tetris. But in this video, we are going to learn how to delete rows and also to tally up or score points as we delete rows. Like always, all the code as well as images and everything are available in the description underneath the video. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off by seeing exactly where we are. So we're going to start up Tetris here and think about what we need to do. Okay, so in the last video, we went over how to move our shapes downwards. And there they go, down and they land. And what we're going to need to do this time is basically cycle through all of the rows on the screen. And then also cycle through, or after we as we are cycling through all the rows on the screen, we are going to then also cycle cycle through every column in each row. And then as we find those individual columns, we are going to eliminate them, move all the other rows down, and then score a point. All right, so that's basically the goal of this video. And now I'm going to jump over and start writing some code. All right, so where should we start? Well, I think the game board is going to make sense. So let's open up the game board. And here is the game board. And let's just start writing our, our methods here. So I'm going to make this a static function. So let's go public static and it's going to return true or false whether it was able to delete rows I think that's what i'm going to do anyway so i'm going to say delete all full rows is going to be the name of this function and its goal is going to be to cycle through every single row so how are we going to do that well we're going to say for int row equal to zero while row we have uh, 19 total so we're going to say while row is less than 20 we want to continue cycling through and then what are we going to do well we're going to need to check if uh, we have a full row or not so i'm going to say if and i'm going to do this in a separate function because i want to try and keep these functions as short as possible so we're going to pass in whatever the row number is then I'm going to call another function, and it is going to be basically to delete a row. So I'm going to say delete game board row. I'm then probably going to want to make a sound, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. So I'm going to go to do make sound. And then after we do that, I'm going to return true. And the reason I'm returning true is because this is a bull and it says delete all full rows and it's going to return true that yes, indeed, a row was deleted. Just in case that is something that I want to be able to verify. Otherwise, if I get down here, I'm going to return false. All right. So now our goal is to go in here and create is row full and also create delete game board row. So let's come out of this function. And this guy obviously is going to return a bool because you saw that up there. I'm going to keep this as static also. So there's another boolean is row full. And it's going to receive the row that it wants me to investigate. And I'm basically just going to cycle through each column inside of that row. So I'm going to say four. Once again, int. Here we're going to be working with columns and we have a total of nine columns, zero through nine. So I'm gonna say while column is less than 10, and then I'm gonna increment the columns, of course. Now remember, all of the different cells inside of our game board are gonna be either null or they are going to contain a transform. If they contain a transform, they contain a cube. If they are null, that means there's nothing inside of them. So what I wanna do here is check if any nulls are found, and if a null is found, we wanna return false which means that the row isn't full. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna say if game board, and this is gonna be column and row is equal to null. Well, in that situation, I'm gonna return false. So pretty straightforward. Otherwise, if we make it through that whole entire list of columns in that row, well, we know that we indeed do have a full row and we can return true. Okay, so that's all set up. What do we gotta do here now? We need to create delete game board row so let's come down here and let's create that this also is going to be public static void delete game board row and it's going to receive the row that it wants deleted obviously and to delete it we're going to have to cycle through and delete the row both in the array as well as in the scene so i'm going to say for int column equal zero 
while column is less than 10 because there's 0 through 9 indexes. Column. Well, I need to destroy the individual cubes inside of there. So we'll go and do that. And that's a game object. And also, we're going to want to destroy the cubes in the array. So. So basically, the array is just mimicking the scene or vice versa, however you'd prefer to look at it that way. And we're going to put a null inside of there instead of the transform for the array. So null basically means empty. So now what do we need to do? Well, we basically need to increment up a row to start moving all of the other rows downwards. So we're going to increment to the next level of rows. And then we want to cycle through all of our rows. So we're going to say for int column is equal to zero. Actually, let's make this J. And then this is going to be row. All right, that makes better sense. And then what we're going to do is say while J is less than 20, we're going to continue incrementing. Okay, that makes more sense. Then we want to cycle through all the columns just like we did previously. So we're going to go int column is equal to zero while column is less than 10. And yes, I'm sure there's some optimization that could be done here because I'm doing the same thing over and over again. But like I said, my whole goal here is to get this to work and then to optimize it afterwards. So I'm going to say game board column J is not equal to null. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to check if there is a block inside of the cell. And if so, I want to move what is above downwards. So I'm going to say game board column and J minus one and make that equal to game board column j. All right, and then after that, I want to delete the cube that was moved down. So I'm gonna say game board column j is equal to null, and there that is. But I'm also gonna have to move the cube that's in the scene as well. So I'm gonna say game board column j minus one dot position, and then I'm gonna change the vector on it, so new vector 3, 0, negative 1, and 0. And that's all we need to do for game board. So we're going to save that, except for the couple little to-dos that I put inside here. Make sure I don't have any errors jumping out at me. And now we're going to jump over into shape and test to see if all of that worked. So here we are over in shape. And where should we test all this? Well, we should test it where we are moving our different shapes downwards. So let's cycle through this guy here, and here it is, I believe. Yes, this is where we're moving downwards inside here. You can see I have comments in here. That's from previous tutorials. I'm going to put the call to delete rows right in here right before we disable this uh, shape. So what I want to do here is delete any full rows that exist. And like I said, this was a Boolean. So I'm going to say row deleted is equal to, and this is going to be game board dot and then I can call delete all full rows and it's going to return true or false if a row was actually deleted. Then what I want to do is if a row was deleted, I want to verify that no other rows exist. So that's why I'm using the Boolean there. So I'm going to say if row deleted, then what I want to do is call, whoops, this is going to be game board like that uppercase. I'm calling a static function and then I'm going to say delete all full rows, whoops, rows. And then I'm going to put a to do inside of here. And this one is going to be um, change the score on user interface. All right, and I'll get to that here in a second. As far as I know, that's all I need to do just to verify that I have the ability to delete rows. So let's jump over into Unity and test it out. Here we are. I don't see any errors down here. So that's a good sign. So let's go and run it and see if it works. And here we go, got this all set up. I'm expecting there to be an error, but you never can tell. All right, so let's just make a row as quickly as possible. Well, that was pretty quick, all right, so we got that. And it worked, all right, so good, good, good. All right, so let's stop that. Next thing I wanna do is I want to change the score whenever a row is deleted. Let's just come in here and just do this right here. What do we wanna call this? Let's call this um, eh, increase text UI score sounds like a good name and let's go and copy that we can just go and put that at the very bottom here of the screen uh, another thing is I think we can get rid of the print array part right now because we don't think we need that anymore so let's just go and get rid of this right now 
There it is, it's gone. All right, so let's create our ability to increase our tech scores. So we're going to make this, it's not gonna return anything, so void, increase tech score, it doesn't receive anything, it's just gonna basically increment. One thing though, if I want to be able to increment or change any of the UI stuff, I have to come in here, yep, I need to throw in a new library here. So I'm gonna go using unity engine dot UI, and there that is back down inside of here and what I'm gonna do is I want to find a matching text UI component which is gonna represent the score if we jump over here this is the guy that I want right here so let's go and open this up and canvas and score this is the guy that I want and its name is score obviously so to get this I'm gonna go var and I'm gonna call this text UI component is equal to game object and I'm specifically looking for the one that has the name of score and then to get the component so we can work with it it go get components and you have to tell it what type it is it's a text UI component and there we go now we got it so what I want to do now is get the string that is stored inside of it and convert it into an integer so I'm gonna call this score is equal to and how we convert that is we go int parse and text UI component and we get text which is the string that's stored inside of it we want to increment the score and then after that we want to convert the score to a string and then update the UI component so to do that we just go text UI components and text is going to be equal to score dot to string and test that out and see if it worked I think it did let's run it all right, so here that is. I'm gonna have to get rid of this new text and let's go see if our Tetris is working. Yeah, I think definitely in the next video we will be able to completely beat Tetris or create Tetris, not beat it. And let's go and get this and see if our score changes right now and if our row deletes. And it did. All right, so cool stuff. Yeah, let's go and do it one more time just to verify here. Let's do it. Bad thing just on purpose and awesome. All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. That was actually straightforward and pretty awesome. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.